Good morning. Um, I would like to show you how to lay a wash, um, a graded wash. And if you're doing this for a sunset, uh, I want to show you how to leave a bright area for the sun. So, first things first, let's mix the colors we're going to use for the wash. So, I squeezed out a little bit of Windsor yellow here, and I'm going to Throw in a bunch. Yeah, when I was mixing my opera, I splashed a little in there. That's okay. It's okay because I have every intention of mixing some of the uh, opera into the yellow. Opera is a quinacridone color. It's very vivid, very stainy. Um, beautiful luminosity. Not a color you want to choose if you want to do a lot of lifts, though. So, I've got my three colors that I'm going to be transitioning between. Now, in my paper, you know, I'm doing this as a simple thing, so I'm not really using a source. I've left a little circle there. I drew it in with pencil. I am not painting over the pencil. That is white of paper. If you need to use masking fluid, if you need to use masking tape, um, anything that will keep you from going over that area, you want to leave it the white of the paper. Don't cover it with yellow yet. But what I'm doing is I'm going to go around it. Now I'm using three different brushes. Um, you can transition from, from, you know, with the same brush and do the different areas of wash, that's fine. Okay, I'm doing this quickly. So I should really just focus on what I'm doing now. What I want to do is get some of my quinacridone, which I have already mixed. Mix it in with the yellow, because that's going to give me a pretty lovely orange. Now I'm doing this on flat of page. Usually when I do a graded wash, I am lifting up the paper. But right now I just want to really make sure I have a good bit of white around the sunset. Oh, lovely schmutz in the paper. If you have something like a little hair that gets in there, do yourself a favor and do not do not try and fish it out in the middle of the wash. Just don't. <laughs> Believe me, it makes amazing messes. And usually when it dries, it's barely there. Okay, now I'm going to start rocking the paper a little bit. This is a quill brush. Very wonderful for laying large areas of color. And it'll come back to a point, too. Now, I'm going to, since I'm done with that, I'll just... Touch a little bit of my phthalo blue in there. There we go. So I've got a nice transition. You can see I am tilting the page. So everything is moving north. You don't have to tilt the page down. You don't have to tilt the page one way or another. Tilt it so that gravity works for you. Now I'm doing it side to side. I'm just trying to control where the surface moisture is. If you wind up with puddles where the paper buckles, if you haven't stretched your paper, and I'm assuming most of you are just going to play around with this and not worry about stretching paper. If you want to deal with those buckles, because the watercolor is going to flow into them, this is what you have to do. When you work flat, that's what happens. That's another good reason to tilt the paper, is that it keeps the water moving around the surface and you don't wind up with big puddles. Now this gives me an even graded wash. Okay. Sorry, this is my... Always keep a little 
stack of paper towel next to you. It's torn so I can control it for those oh no moments or to take up the excess if you see it's puddling on the edge of the paper. What would happen if I didn't do this is that I'd get a lot of watercolor coming right up to the edge here. The area up here would dry. This would re-wet it, push back, and give me what's called a back run, which is a little bloom edge to the side of the paper. This can be wonderful if you want like a row of shrubs on the edge of the paper. This can be really miserable if you're trying to do a big flat sky. And remember, there's always the option of cropping off the edge. It's fine, we have scissors, you're allowed to use them. Okay, now I still don't quite want to put this down because you can see there's still a little bit of moisture there. So I'll tilt this a bit. Now it's dried down here. And I can see I've got a little edge here. Paper didn't totally work with me. And you know what? I think I'm going to put in some clouds. So it, mm, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait as, the, as tempting as it is to do it right now. If I came in right on that edge, because the blue was wetter than the pink when I came in, if I came in on that edge, I'm going to have a bloom mainly up here. You know what? That might look neat. Let me give it a try. Let's see what happens. If I use the quill brush, it's going to deposit a lot. If I use this synthetic wash brush, it won't deposit as much. Oh, let's go in for the whole thing. With clouds, it's kind of nice to remember just the, the science of it. They're sitting on a layer of atmosphere. Um, so it's, unless you're looking straight up, you probably are going to be aware of a little bit more flatness on the bottom. And since this cloud is above our line of sight for the sunset, I'm going to bring some of that orange I've been working with down below. Now remember, the orange is not a tube orange. The orange was a mix of the opera and the Windsor yellow. I'm going to drop a little bit more of this on. I kind of like it. There's that puddled edge I was thinking was going to happen. Not puddled edge, excuse me. That one's the bloom edge. Bloom edge has that little bit of crenellation. That's more of a puddled edge where it's a wet on dry. This one has a little bit more of that wet on wet going for it. Now, I could come in with some more clouds. I could play with this, but you can see now that I've got this brilliant white circle. Gonna rock that cloud a bit more, see what happens. So, in here, I've got the white. I'm going to take when this dries, not now, don't get an eraser anywhere near wet watercolor. When this dries, I'm going to come in, erase that graphite, and then work it up some more. Okay, I'm still rocking those clouds over there. And they're very wet. Now I'm going to just drop some extra opera in and stop rocking the paper <laughs> and see what happens. Let the watercolor do a little bit of action. So that's graded wash, protecting the sun, little cloud up above. We'll see what happens. It's still too wet to tell. 
when this dries, I can come back in down here with reflective colors. I can lay it in as a wash, then glaze over, or I can come in with wet on dry, active brushwork if, you know, if it's a more active body of water. But that's another class. Well, I finally worked this up a little bit more. Um, I worked into the cloud a bit more, layered into the bottom, and then I put in the bottom um, a glaze on top of a thin layer of blues. Um, so there's pink in there, there's some blue in there. I came in with a little bit of dry brush, got a sense of, you know, the rolling waves. So it was fun. But the main thing is see how you can lay in a graded wash and then protect the area of the brilliance of the sun.